Hello everyone, I am Alex Krasnok from Florida International University and here we will be discussing complex frequency excitations in photonics. I want to begin my talk by reminding everyone of the ongoing war in Ukraine escalated by Russia on February 24, 2022. After initial failure, Putin now frames this conflict as a fight against the United States, Europe and NATO. A Russian possible victory would have devastating global consequences. So supporting Ukraine is standing with the United States, democracy and the values of freedom. As researchers in photonics and electromagnetism, we are deeply familiar with Maxwell equations. They are central to our work. However, our expertise in these areas often coincide with a constant struggle for research funding. But let me tell you how well these two are related. This beautiful gentleman is a founding father Benjamin Franklin. His work on electricity, including the invention of the lighting rod, is very well known. However, there is another aspect of his contribution that just a few consider, and I mean his role in the acceptance of negative numbers and, uh, and their importance for electromagnetism. Negative numbers first appeared in ancient China in the 2nd century before current era. However, European mathematicians long viewed them uh, with a skepticism, as an abstraction. Franklin, however, proposed the concept of positive and negative charges in 1740s, even before negative numbers were fully accepted. This was revolutionary because he introduced the first truly objective example of a negative quantity, the negative electric charge of the electron. Despite initial doubts, Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism developed in the 19th century fundamentally depends and relies on the e existence of negative charges. So by the time of Maxwell, it was clear if you question the reality of negative numbers, you would struggle to develop a coherent theory of electromagnetism without them. Today, many, including STEM students, similarly see complex numbers as abstractions, but they are essential in, for example, quantum mechanics. Indeed, the Schrodinger equation, which governs the quantum mechanics and quantum mechanics systems, inherently involves the imaginary unit here. This is necessary and unavoidable. So without the imaginary unit in this equation, the equation would be second order in time, requiring two initial conditions, which isn't physically accurate in quantum. Moreover, quantum tomography today even allows us to indirectly measure the complex wave function affirming its existence. So one can say if you doubt the reality of complex numbers, try developing quantum theory without them. Recent research in light scattering has prompted a re-evaluation of complex quantities, particularly in the context of complex frequency signals Unlike traditional harmonic signals, these complex signals exhibit exponential growth or exponential decay. To illustrate this, let's consider a frequency omega and extend it into the complex frequency plane. So here the frequency is seen as having two comp components, the real frequency, which depends on the traditional harmonic part, and the imaginary frequency. When we substitute this complex frequency into the harmonic signal, represented by e to the power of i omega t, the result is a harmonic function with an amplitude that either exponentially grows or decays depending on the sign of the imaginary part of the frequency. Let's consider a generic scattering object excited by a harmonic signal at a frequency omega. Upon scattering, different part, partial waves propagate in various directions. This scattering process is characterized by a response function S, which depends on the frequency omega. 
The typical formula for this uh, response function is presented here. If we plot this function against omega, we observe a Lorentzian resonant profile. This profile is centered around omega zero with a bandwidth gamma, where gamma represents the losses and decoherence in, in the system. Under certain mathematical conditions, we can analytically continue this response function into the complex frequency plane, which includes both real and imaginary components as shown here. In this extended plane, we encounter two distinct free, uh, features known as poles and zeros. This arises because the response function is a meromorphic function, meaning it has both a numerator and denominator. If the imaginary frequencies of the poles and zeros are equal, the system is considered Hermitian, meaning it obeys the time reversal symmetry. On the other hand, if these imaginary frequencies differ, the system is non-Hermitian and it does not adhere to the time reversal symmetry. For a more general system with multiple eigenmodes, the scattering a response function must be expressed as a product over all the peculiar points in the complex frequency plane according to the uh, Weierstrass factorization theorem for meromorphic functions. We can use information about poles and zeros in the complex frequency plane for both analysis and excitation. For mo monochromatic excitation, we get a Lorentzian profile as just we discussed. If we excite the system with a signal that has a negative imaginary frequency, the signal grows, leading to a suppressed quality factor that we, call, that we call a virtual gain effect. This happens because the system is excited further from the pole, storing the energy within the system during this excitation. On the other hand, if we use an exponentially decaying signal, we move closer to the pole, resulting in a narrower response function with an increased quality factor, the effect that we term a virtual gain. This occurs because the excitation field decays faster than the system radiation field. The initial work in this area, but without this analysis, was conducted using what is known as time-reversed excitation. To illustrate this, consider a resonator with an excited mode that naturally decays through, for example, a single pore. As the signal decays, we can record it. Then, by time-reversing this recorded signal, and we can use it to re-excite the resonator to achieve perfect excitation, meaning the signal enters the resonator without any reflections or scatterings. There are many interesting developments in this field, and I would like to highlight just two examples. The first one is my favorite, comes from the quantum circuit domain. In a study by Martinez Research Group, researchers explored a system consisting of a microwave resonator with a qubit inside. The, the recorded re, uh, radiated signal was time-reversed and then the authors used this time-reverse signal to perfectly excite the quantum circuit system without any reflections. In another recent work from our group, we applied this approach for a different purpose, uh, namely to achieve reflectionless plasma excitation in a microwave resonator. We used an aluminum resonator equip, equipped with two metallic field concentrators to enhance the field inside by placing a glass, a gas tube in the gap between these two concentrators. We tailored the excitation in time to eliminate any reflection, any reflected signals right up until the moment the plasma was created within the resonator. This approach holds potential for powerful systems designed for reflectionless plasma sources.
This approach is versatile and extends to multiple multi-port systems. For instance, in a two-port resonator, we can excite the system from both ports, perfectly storing all the energy within, within the resonator. This method also applies to two-dimensional and three-dimensional resonators and even empty waveguides with a step discontinuities, allowing for perfect reflection-free excitation and precise energy localization in this, in this waveguide here. Such techniques are useful in applications, for example, microwave near-field microscopy. Next, by starting with the Hermitian system and adding a specific amount of loss, we can shift one of the zeros to the real frequency axis, creating a zero scattering regime. This regime is crucial for applications like antenna impedance matching. It's also used in resonant perfect absorbers which are designed to fully absorb incoming energy and convert it into forms like excitons or heat, as shown in this work on graphene monolayers. Similarly, adding the right amount of gain can bring a pole to the real frequency axis, creating a so-called lasing threshold regime. In our recent nanophotonics work, we designed a nano laser that switches from a bright lasing state to an invisible anapole state at the same frequency. This transition is enabled by a phase change in the material from crystalline to amorphous. When designing photonic systems, we often use the lumped element circuit approach for its simplicity and effective analysis techniques. Using this method, we explored light scattering anomalies in RLC circuits and observed a number of interesting effects. Consider a simple LC resonator connected to a single port. Depending on parameters like capacitance in our case, poles and zeros appear in different positions in the complex plane. Two regimes emerge here. First, when the imaginary frequency is less than the real frequency. The pole, in this case, radiates an oscillating field, which can be perfectly excited by a corresponding zero, like shown here. The second regime, when the imaginary frequency exceeds the real frequency, the pole's radiation dissipates faster than it can oscillate, leading to a non-oscillating radiated field. As the pole transitions, where the real and imaginary frequencies are equal, this line here, its radiation behavior changes dramatically from oscillating to non-oscillating type. Using visible pole zero engineering, we can design systems with intriguing anomaly scattering effects that are highly popular today. Let me highlight just two examples here. First one is the example of bound, bound state in the continuum, which is the state with unboundedly large quality factor in an op open system. By coupling two resonators with a capacitor, we can tune the zero and pole of one eigenmode to align at the real frequency axis in a strong coupling regime. In this state, the quality factor of the bound state increases infinitely as the coupling capacity grows. Another example is anisotropic transmission resonance, or ATR effect. In a two-port circuit with two resonators coupled by a capacitor, this effect occurs at the transition between weak and strong coupling. When exciting the system from port 1, the reflected signal diminishes significantly after the transient period, while the transmittance remains nearly full. However, when excited from port 2, the reflected signal remains nearly equal to the incident signal, demonstrating a strong directional dependence in the system's response. 
Finally, we recently discovered a fascinating effect called visible-invisible pole coupling. In a system with two resonators, one with a visible pole and the other with invisible pole, we observe the following. Exciting the system through the visible pole, uh, pole zero, produces a nearly time reversed reflection of the oscillating field. However, exciting the say system through the invisible pole zero with a non-oscillating field results in an oscillating reflected field at the visible pole's frequency. So this effect could enable non-scattering excitation of circuits, including quantum circuits, for example, without using coaxial cables and potentially solving the so-called scalability bottleneck of quantum computers. We extended this effect from ROC circuits to integrated photonics using silicon waveguides on a chip. We designed a structure with a single mode uh, photonic waveguide side coupled to a ring resonator, which in turn is coupled to a second resonator. We tune the parameters to create one invisible pole and another visible pole at the nearly same real frequency. Like RLC circuits, exciting the system through the visible pole produces a nearly time reverse response, while excitation through the invisible pole with a non-scattering field results in the, uh, in the conversion of the non scattering field to oscillating one. This system operates in the C-band infrared frequency range, which is crucial for optical communications. Thank you very much for your attention.